Hey everyone in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Thank you all for your support on social media and subscribing to our blogs and YouTube videos. We now are on iTunes with our podcast for all the shows and the news and there's a link below. If you want to discuss career opportunities or you're looking to hire the best cloud professionals, you can book a one-to-one -one call with me using my online diary. Below is a link in the description box. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Limpicum, who is the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. And this week we have a special guest, Bernard Golden, who is the Capital One Vice President of Cloud. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. This week, Microsoft is offering security researchers up to 250,000 US dollars for bugs in the same class as Meltdown and Spectre, and up to 200,000 US dollars for similar vulnerabilities in its Hyper-V virtualization software. Philip Misner, Principal Security Group Manager at Microsoft, explained that speculative execution is truly a new class of vulnerabilities, and we expect that research is already underway exploring new attack methods. This bounty program is intended as a way to foster that research and the coordinated disclosure of vulnerabilities related to these issues. The bug bounty is split into four tiers. For tier two, Microsoft is offering $200,000 for speculative execution migration bypasses for Azure, and tier three is the same but for Windows. Tier four has a reward of $25,000 for the new exploits for unknown vulnerabilities. Security researchers can find the full bounty details on TechNeck. I've included the link below in the description box. This week saw StreetBee's CEO raise another 12 million US dollars of funding. The startup market research company utilizes artificial intelligence that is turning the 45 billion US dollar market research industry on its head. The conventional approach of questionnaires or surveys is being taken to a new level. The company is paying a million of real people around the world to take photos and videos of their products, services and habits of their daily lives. With the power of artificial intelligence and geolocation technology, StreetBees connects businesses and corporations with real people on the ground to gather real-time insights. Founded in 2015 by Tuche Boulet, the CEO, and Oliver May, the COO, the startup has raised a total of 17.1 million US dollars funding. StreetBees is also backed by some of the best and planet's most renowned investors and entrepreneurs, including Robin Klein, Richard Reed, and the Octopus Ventures. This week saw you commune become Asia's largest co-working space provider with acquisition of Wu Space. The announcement came two months after Ucommune's acquisition of New Space, boosting the valuation of Ucommune to 1.7 billion US dollars. Founded in 2015 by Mao Dakin, and I hope I've got your name pronounced correctly, Ucommune provides startups, SMEs, and corporate tenants with on-demand short-term leasing and customized space solutions. In early 2016, Ucommune participated in an A round financing of WooSpace through strategic equity investment. Dr. Mal Bakin said that the merger draws on the cultural and technical strengths of both companies' community spirit, commercial development, and ecological development. All our members will be integrated to our Ucommune platform to enable more efficient and effective operations and better community synergy. This week saw long-serving Telstra loyalist CIO John Romano exit the telco. John Romano had a close to 30-year career with Telstra. He filled a number of technology and executive management roles and took the dual role of CIO and CDO in 2016. Chief Technology Officer Hakan Eriksson, who is an accomplished leader, Eriksson held roles including CEO of Australia and New Zealand and will act as CIO in addition to his responsibilities. Over the past year, Romano has overseen a major digitalization program, which has seen new cloud-based systems including Salesforce and ServiceNow being rolled out and legacy systems and applications being decommissioned. He also oversaw the launch of a business-focused mobile app, Telstra Connect, that offers tools for enterprise customers and Expert Finder, which helps customers directly contact a relevant Telstra expert. 
Romano also helped facilitate the adoption of agile methodologies within the technology function. As of the end of last year, more than 100 teams were using agile with the expectation that 400 teams, some 5,000 staff, would be within a few years. This week, co-owner of Alassian, Mike Cannon-Brooks, spoke out about the visa changes that hurt Alassian directly. Speaking at a Senate Select Committee on the Future of Work and Workers, Mike Cannon-Brooks said the scrapping of the 457 temporary visa class had damaged Australia's reputation in the largest industry in the world. He said that we've said to the global tech community, we are fundamentally closed for business. The government's decision about the 457 visa and the uncertainty that came around that announcement hurt us directly as a company. The restrictions are suffocating our ability to become a leading innovation nation and fundamentally threatening Atlassian's ability to remain headquartered here as much as the founders would love that to be the case. Cannon Brooks added that although technology companies were suffering now, soon all sectors and industries would be negatively affected. Every company is becoming or already is a software company, which means that more and more of these jobs are becoming technology jobs, which means the problems I have are going to be every industry's problems in the future, he said. Technology is the single greatest competitive advantage in business today. Unlike existing industries though, the future does not have a lobbyist. Google argued in its submission, business critical skills have been excluded from the longer term visa categories that are necessary to attract workers with the knowledge and experience required to train younger Australian employees. In response to the outcry in the tech world, the Turnbull government has now stated that it will create a new visa to allow countries to sponsor migrants for the jobs with annual salaries of more than 180,000 Australian dollars. It's called the Global Talent Scheme or GTS and it is designed to help Australia attract top talent in fields where there are skill shortages like biomedicine and agricultural technology. A government media statement said, the government recognises there is a fierce competition globally for high-tech skills and talent and that attracting these people helps to transfer skills to Australian workers and grow Australian-based businesses. Established businesses with an annual turnover of more than 4 million Australian dollars will be able to sponsor highly skilled and experienced individuals for positions with earnings above 180,000 Australian dollars into Australia. The GTS will be rolled out in the form of a year-long trial, replacing the 457 temporary school shortage visas. Mike Cannon-Brooks applauded the move via Twitter, saying, I should say here that kudos to the government for responding to the feedback. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's news and remember to like, subscribe, comment and share these videos with your friends and your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and you can also check out the latest shows with David Linthicum and the podcast with the link in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.